Hello and welcome to New York's Penn Station. Today we're riding on Amtrak's Northeast Regional from here up to New Haven, Connecticut. As so many of our journeys out of New York begin at Moynihan Train Hall, I figured we'd start today's video at the original Penn Station complex. Located one block east of Moynihan, Penn Station sits below Madison Square Garden. First opened by the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1910, Penn Station was once contained in a beautiful station building. Passenger numbers dwindled in the late 50s and early 60s, leading to the demolition of the station headhouse in 1963 the iconic structure replaced by the Madison Square Garden Arena and two Penn Plaza. This forced much of the function of Penn Station underground, the station now a low-ceilinged, catacomb-like facility and a husk of the former glorious terminal. Following the signs around the construction on West 31st Street, we can head into the older side of New York's Penn Station. Stepping inside the station, we enter the main hall of Penn Station. Here, passengers will find numerous departure boards, an information desk, and access to the central waiting area for ticketed passengers. It's also one of only a handful of places in the older facility with a ceiling higher than one story. Renovations to Penn Station came throughout the 1980s and 90s, adding increased capacity, station entrances, and a dedicated New Jersey Transit concourse. Beyond the hall, passengers will find plenty of shops and small restaurants along the two outer hallways, with access to the tracks below through the perpendicular corridor at the edge of the station. Penn Station will be receiving a major overhaul in the coming years. The MTA's proposed plans for the updated station include a nearly 250,000 square foot main concourse, improved accessibility, new subway connections, more retail options, and a new 30,000 square foot public plaza above ground. This is only one of a few plans currently in the works for Penn Station, so the final product will likely change, but all signs point to an improved and expanded central rail terminus for New York City. While the current Penn Station is fine, it's not where we'll be boarding from today. Instead, we have to head up and out of Penn Station and across 8th Avenue to the stunning Moynihan Train Hall. There's no direct access to Moynihan Train Hall from the upper concourse of Penn Station because of the 8th Avenue subway line which runs just below street level. Stepping inside, we once again enter the amazing Moynihan Train Hall. It's a night and day difference between Penn Station and Moynihan. A look up at the departure board shows that our train, Northeast Regional Train 150, is set for an on-time departure of 7 a.m. We don't have time to admire the beautiful train hall, as the first boarding announcement is made for Train 50 almost as soon as we arrive. Dipping down into the West End concourse, we can descend onto Track 10 for boarding. Heading up to the first car, we can climb aboard. Coach class on Amtrak is open seating, with cars laid out in a 2x2. Two two. When we arrive, our car is entirely empty, though a few passengers make their way on board before departure. Up front, we catch a glimpse of our Siemens ACS 64 locomotive. 668 is hauling train 150 today, the locomotive the third newest locomotive in Amtrak's ACS 64 fleet. Right as the clock hits 7 a.m., the doors slide shut and train 150 departs towards Boston. We unfortunately don't make it very far before our train grinds to a halt. It's just our luck that one of the switches ahead has become stuck in the wrong position, which means our train can't proceed. After around 30 minutes of staring at the tunnel walls, our conductor announces that we'll be backing up to the previous switch, where we'll transfer onto the other track to proceed. While we wait for our train to exit the tunnels below the East River, let's take a look at our route up to New Haven. Our journey begins heading east and then north out of New York City and along the Long Island Sound. The tracks twist and turn their way along the coast, our train making stops in New Rochelle in New York and Stamford in Connecticut. The sharp turns limit our train speed to just 70 miles per hour, the 30 mile per hour bend just before Bridgeport, one of the slowest sections on today's ride. 
It's then smooth sailing up the coast, our train coming to a stop at New Haven's Union Station. We'll cover a total of 75 miles on our ride today, with a travel time of 2 hours and 23 minutes. Exiting the tunnels below the East River and onto the viaducts through Queens reveals some unbelievable views of the Manhattan skyline. As we pass over the Hellgate Bridge, the views keep getting better. The Robert F. Kennedy Bridge fills the foreground, with the skyline of New York City standing tall beyond. Northeast regional trains are operated by Amtrak's Amfleet 1 coaches. Coach class seats offer around 4 inches of legroom, with a bit of additional space beneath the next row to stretch out or store personal belongings. The seat back pocket is in good condition and holds the safety information card for our coach. The tray table folds down from the seat back and is large enough to get some work done or dine while on the move. Above each row are two lights, controlled by the buttons in between. At seat power is provided through the two outlets located just below the window. Seat adjustments are made using the button inside the armrest, which allows the seat back to recline about 20 degrees. The physical seats are very comfortable. They're super thick with tons of support on both the bottom and back. Their excellent padding makes these seats comfortable for short commutes or long distance travels alike. For those carry-on bags that don't fit beneath the seats, luggage racks can be found above either side of the train. A traditional rack is located at the end of each coach for passengers not wanting to lift suitcases into the racks above. Our ride north soon came to another halt, this time waiting for the platform at New Rochelle to clear. Being stationary does allow us to get a look at the dying infrastructure of the Northeast Corridor. Much like the majority of the major structures along the Northeast Corridor, many of the catenary support towers are from well before Amtrak was formed in 1971. This rusted support tower is likely from the days of the New York and New Haven Railroad, and could have been built as early as the 1910s. Hopefully Amtrak or Metro North, the commuter line who shares the tracks from New York to New Haven, will replace all of these support towers before the first of many come tumbling down. Our delay is short-lived, and our train pulls forward into New Rochelle. If you're enjoying our ride on the Northeast Regional, why not hit that subscribe button? It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my patrons and channel members. Y'all are amazing, and I cannot thank you enough for your incredible support. If you too want your name in the video, or just want to support the channel in more ways than one, then head on over to the links in the description below. Back on the move, it's time to go in search of a snack. The cafe car on Northeast Regionals is located towards the center of the train. Amtrak's Amfleet 1 cafe cars include two sections of tables for dining passengers, with eight tables per side for a total of 16. The cafe offers a variety of snacks, drinks, and larger food items for purchase, all at a fairly reasonable price. From the selection, I chose a can of cold brew coffee and the egg white and cheese sandwich. The cold brew is dark and rich. It's a little on the bitter side, but still excellent. The egg and cheese sandwich, though not visually appealing, is actually very tasty. There's tons of cheese, the egg is soft, and the bread is light. Overall, a solid breakfast sandwich. We finally pick up speed heading north, or at least as much speed as we're allowed to, our train limited to 70 miles per hour by the constant tight turns of the Connecticut coast. Bathrooms on Amfleet 1s are located at the ends of each car, with one regular and one accessible. Stepping inside, we slide the door shut behind us. Amtrak bathrooms are all fairly standard, with the usual suite of sink, toilet, and outlets. The sink works well with plenty of soap, paper towels, and toilet paper.
The only thing that doesn't appear to be at its best are the two outlets, though they seem to work, so no issues there. Overall, it's a standard Amtrak bathroom. Returning to our seat, our train rounds the tight curve towards our next station stop of Bridgeport, the end of train 150 clearly visible around the sharp bend. The Pequannock River greets us on the other side of Bridgeport, the 1998 Pequannock River Bridge carrying trains 372 feet or 113.4 meters across the waterway. Our train is finally able to keep time heading north. Metro North commuter trains passing us on the southbound tracks. Train 150 decelerates as we pass the south end of the New Haven Metro North Yard, our train pulling to a stop on track 3 at the end of the line. The doors slide open and we can step out into New Haven. The doors slide back shut, locomotive 668 throttles up, and train 150 heads north towards Boston. It's a flurry of action as soon as our train leaves the station. First up is Amtrak Hartford Line Train 450 departing north for Springfield. We don't even make it halfway down the platform before another train pulls in. This time it's a sell of train 2249 on its way to Washington, D.C. As much as I would love to stay to watch its departure, it's very cold, so I'm quick to head down into the warmth of Union Station. New Haven's Union Station is by far one of my favorite mid-sized stations in the United States. This current Union Station is actually the third major station to serve New Haven. The first was built in 1848, the second took over in 1879, and the third was constructed in 1920 after the second was destroyed in a fire. The best part of this station, as with many of its day, is the absolutely stunning main hall. The high ceiling, massive arched windows, numerous globe lights, and marble furnishings bring passengers back to the golden days of rail travel in the United States. While I'd love to stay and admire Union Station all day, we do have to bring today's video to a close. Next week, we'll be climbing aboard Amtrak's Southwest Chief for a two-day, 42-hour adventure from Los Angeles to Chicago. If you're new around here, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. Another huge thank you to my loyal patrons and members. Y'all are amazing and your incredible generosity is greatly appreciated. If you too want your name in the video or just want to support the channel in more ways than one, then head on over to the links in the description below. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me and I'll see you in the next one.